after a lifetime of crime and prison. Tracy Mason didn't like what he saw in the mirror, so he moved back to his old neighborhood in Wichita, Kansas, to open a free boxing gym for at-risk youth. Most of these kids won't grow up to be professional boxers, and Tracy is fine with that. The gym is a means to an end. It gives me the opportunity to be one-on-one -on -one with a youngster and to be consistent in their life, not just for a week, not just for a month, but for the rest of their life. My intent is to just be ready and available at all types of hours for whenever a youth has to reach out to me. Look me in the eyes! Go! Where are you going? Tracy lives in a back room of the gym and cooks his meals in a makeshift kitchen. He collects used clothes and shoes, sorts them, and hauls them into his front yard each day. I've had a lot of youth come in here didn't have coats, and I'd be like blown away, like why? So I, I just said to myself that if I'm able, I'm gonna try to get them a coat or some shoes or whatever. It's a horrible feeling to be without shoes and clothes and coats, especially coats in the wintertime. Tracy's neighborhood is in a food desert, so he invited a local nonprofit to set up a free food pantry in the back of the gym. I used to coach at other gyms, and I would see youth come in that was hungry. So I made it up in my mind that I would have food available for those that didn't have food at home, because it's hard to be able to be a good human being, a sound thinking human being, if you're hungry. Because he grew up in this neighborhood, Tracy is uniquely qualified to talk to the kids. What's up, good brother? Looking like In dealing with youth, you have to be real. If you haven't came from where they came from, they're going to spot it out. So if I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth, I wouldn't be able to talk to someone that was born with no shoes. Busting that crap up for free, man. How much money you get for that? <laughs> and his prior life of crime has one unexpected benefit. I haven't been the best human being most of my life. Going through that experience, I can relate back to the youth that has gone through the same thing I went through, so as I can teach them how to really avoid that. I told you I got eyes in the back of my head. And then hopefully he goes outside of what I went through. Do what the teacher wants. As long as they're not telling you jump off this building or go sell drugs. Did everybody hear me? Yes, sir. Did everybody hear me? Because if somebody offers you to sell drugs, you run. But most of all, Tracy understands the world these young people live in. The single biggest issue that I see that young people are facing is fear. It breaks my heart when I hear stories of youngsters that the one thing they're worried about is being shot or jumped. For Tracy, the solution starts with a simple act. I have this tendency to just want the neighborhood to look nice, so I, I took it upon myself to pick the litter up. Just taking pride in if I see something, do something about it. You know, I see a, a yard that needs to be cut, go cut the yard. If I see some kids without shoes, just go take them shoes. But it's more than just sprucing up the neighborhood. Tracy walks the streets day and night. It's more than just me walking just to be walking. It's me wanting to troubleshoot. Many times I've walked up on youth that were getting ready to do things that were illegal. And it's me wanting the neighborhood to be safe for the ones that want to come out and ride their bikes. It's rare that you see youth playing. That's hard you know, out in their front yards because of the fear of being shot. Tracy makes a point of attending local football games, where gangs sometimes recruit new members. He even talked the police chief into stopping by the gym and chatting with his kids. Gordon, nice to meet you. So how's it going? Getting a workout? Tracy works a full-time job, though after paying rent and gym expenses, there's not a lot left over. His truck is on its last legs, and the workout equipment is held together with duct tape. 
No matter how hard Tracy tries, he'll never solve all these issues on his own. Luckily, he has a lot of allies among the local businessmen. Bryce's barbershop is a neighborhood hub. Bryce hears all the gossip, talks to the kids as he cuts their hair, and even offers free haircuts for good grades. Bryce remembers when the neighborhood used to be a thriving, family-friendly community. Now it's filled with empty lots and decaying houses. The few businesses still around are struggling, and the murder rate is skyrocketing. Desperate to stop the killing, Tracy launched Gloves Over Guns. When there's a disagreement on the street, he invites both parties to the gym to box it out. If those two individuals were to settle their beef with boxing gloves on, they will leave with their mutual respect that that person is not my enemy for real. I just had some pent up aggression against him because I don't just let him box. We talk about the root problem and hopefully it resolves it. And that's the end game for me is that they go home. You don't go home with guns. You're going to the hospital, you're going to jail, or you're going to die. Tracy wasn't always like this. What makes a self-described bad guy turn around and dedicate his life to doing good? I became a granddad, so I had to look myself in the face. You know, is granddad going to be helping feed somebody, helping clothe somebody, or is he going to be somebody taking food from somebody's mouth? So when I'm seeing my grandkids, I mean, I, it's a, a feeling that's beyond pride and love and joy just doesn't explain it. Um, I'm lost for words now because I'm just thinking about, the, hey, I'm a granddad, I'm a father, and I got these unexplainable feelings. The dictionary words doesn't have anything to explain them. It wasn't until Nico showed up that I understood the true purpose of the boxing gym. Nico is one of Tracy's best boxers and assistant coach. The chair against the wall. I said, get to a chair. He brings his daughter Grace to the gym with him almost every night. Thank you. Check the elbow, elbow stays tucked, flip. So when I um, decided to open a uh, gym, I wanted to be family oriented. Bring your child, feel comfortable. I don't want to be one of those gyms that say that that's not allowed, you know, because this dad has a responsibility. So I don't want him to leave his responsibility just because he's going to my gym. There we go. So hopefully it sets into a young man's mind, stay in your child's life. Go do your responsibility as a man first. Your child, that's your first responsibility, not this gym. I know it. Yeah, you good? When Grace cries while Nico's working out, Tracy picks her up and shares his meal. It's a message he wants the whole neighborhood to hear. So he's organized a peace and unity march through downtown Wichita. This is my purpose, to really focus on the violence that we do against each other in our community. I want us to stop killing us. In the last 72 hours, there have been four young men murdered. Nine young men have been shot. So you telling me your brother is your enemy? Your sister is your enemy? Just because what? You mad today? I want people that look like me to not look at me as the enemy and not look at each other as the enemy. I didn't come to get out the way. I came to get in the way. I came back to join you men. I came back to help you. But we got to change up our ways. We got to be kind to one another. 
We gotta hug each other. Say hello to each other. Stop mean mugging each other. Come on, y'all, we gotta do better. We gotta do much better. I just really believe that if we're kind to each other, that if we care for each other, that if we treat each other with mutual respect, that a lot of things that we have issues with would just go away.